Hey guys, welcome to another video tutorial. Once again, sorry about the delay. I've been getting ready for college as well as getting moved in. I'm now in Canada and have completed my first week. Hasn't gotten too bad yet. Anyway, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a statistical map using Blender. Let's begin. Start off by deleting the default cube. And now we are going to import a reference map of the world, or whatever geographical location suits you. I'm just going to pull mine off of my YouTube analytics page. To do this, go ahead hit N to bring up the properties tab and tick background images. Open that up and hit add image and then open. Uh, I've just named mine ref and now if we go into top view mode and hit 5 we can see that the reference image is now there. Uh, I'm just going to turn the opaque value up to 1 so that it's more easily seen. Um, yeah, We don't really have to reposition it or resize it, it'll be fine. All you have to do is make sure that the resolution is high enough. My reference image has a resolution of 1275 by 796. Now let's begin the actual modeling process. What we're going to do is we're going to outline each region in vertices. And then using uh, B-Mesh, we will select all of the vertices in a region and hit F to create a, an N-GON. Uh, while you'd be able to do this type of thing in versions of Blender prior to 2.63, it'd be very painful. You'd have to go through and figure out how to turn each set of vertices into a rectangle or triangle. Take note that uh, most of the time you do not want to create N-GONs, as it is very bad topology because you can't control how it bends. However, as this will not really be animated and it won't be bending, uh, you can use the Angon for this purpose. Let's begin with Australia. To do this, just center your uh, cursor right in the middle and hit Shift A and create a plane. Tab into edit mode and delete three of the vertices. Now with the remaining vertice selected, pull that onto the somewhere on the outline of Australia. Just extrude along the outline by hitting E and just trace it out. You don't have to be too accurate, no one will really notice. And then if you hit Control L, it will select all of the linked vertices and then hit F. And it will create a single mesh, just like that. Okay, I'm going to include Papua New Guinea and New Zealand as part of the Australian region. Um, how you divide the world is really up to you. But to uh, start working on another island, just select one of these vertices and hit Shift D to duplicate, and then just go ahead and extrude around that island. Okay, so here's New Zealand. Okay. I'm just going to do this so that I can show you something quickly. Um, so here's Papua New Guinea. And hit Control L. Okay, so now um, say you have a border between two regions that are touching. You're going to have this up here in um, Europe and over here and a little bit between South America and North America. What you're going to do so that the um, so that the regions are properly aligned, just tab into the edit mode on uh, the original region, hit Shift D to duplicate, then Escape, and then press P to separate. Now tab out of edit mode and select the new vertices or new object. Tab into edit mode and continue on. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, now 
as you can probably tell, modeling all of this out is going to be a lot of work and it's going to be quite tedious. So um, I'm just going to pause the video and I will resume when I am done modeling everything out. Now that the regions are done, we can uh, begin the fun part by giving them depth. Uh, this will act kind of like a bar graph. If there are more uh, data points for an area, uh, the region will be thicker. We're going to use the solidify moder modifier to make this much easier. Now, with my image and the number of views uh, my channel has received, I'm going to use the constant 0 0.001 to be multiplied against the number of views. This way we can still see the region and it won't be out of our viewport. As you can see, this is already starting to look pretty good. Um, yeah, so just go add modifier, solidify, and for my channel, uh, Europe has, let's just start with the uh, constant, multiply it against 2040. And then let's go with Asia, solidify 0 0.001 times um, 496. Then Africa, solidify 0 0.001 times 99. And then Australia is 0 0.001 times 181. Oh. Missed that, 0.001 times 181. And then South America, it's solidify 0.001 times 243. And then finally, it's North America, 0.001 times 1424. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. I seem to have some link going on here. Don't really know what that is. Um, hmm, interesting. It won't show up in our render, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so this is looking good. Um, we're just going to change here. Let's go over to materials now and camera view more mode and rendered. Um, Let's go ahead and delete this lamp and change the world color from this dark gray to a white. Or not to a white, but to white. Okay, fantastic. Um, this is kind of a personal preference. You can make it any color you want, but I like white. Um, so now, yeah. We're going to go ahead and start creating a color scheme. I would suggest going to a website to create it. Uh, I'm usually pretty bad at it. I'll post a link to the one I am using down in the description lo description bar. Um, let me go find one. Let's see. Color scheme designer looks kind of like this. And you can just spin this little spinny bob to whatever color scheme you want and it will give you an idea of what colors to use. So I'm just going to go with a nice orange right there. Just going to move this over. And so countries with or regions with more views are going to have a darker color and regions with fewer views are going to have a lighter color. So just select this whole Europe there and go over to materials, create new material. Let's call it dark orange and give it a dark dark orange color. Okay. And then we'll call this medium dark orange, I guess.
Let's see who has more. South America. Medium light orange. It'll start getting harder to control as you get more toward a white as all the colors start blending together. There. There we go. That looks okay. I think I want a little bit darker though. Light orange. And then I think this guy, Africa, is just going to be white. And let's make that a really bright white. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's start setting up the camera. Go ahead and hit Shift S and cursor to center. Hit Shift A and create an empty. Uh, we probably should be doing this over in this viewport. Um, go to camera view mode in the viewer and let's see, select the camera, then the empty and hit control T, track to constant. Now if we move the camera, notice that it's always following our empty are always looking at the empty. So now we can just grab the empty, drag it around. Let's drag the camera around. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so we're pretty close to being done. Um, yeah, so that's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, this image isn't going to require all the power of cycles, uh, although it's going pretty fast. I think we can actually make it a little bit faster. Let's just turn render up to 150 passes. If we give this a go now, um, it takes a longer time. There we go. Let's turn down the transparency all the way down to zero, and the both of them down to zero. Turn the bounces, let's go down to four, leave that at minimum amount at 3. Turn the diffuse down and the glossy down because we don't have any glossy objects. Now I believe if we give this a go it should be faster maybe. Let's give Africa a little bit of color because it's kind of hard to see. little bit of orange there. There we go. Okay, I will unpause this when it's done rendering. Okay, close enough. Um, so as you can see, here, let's just make that big again. Um, it looks pretty good. It looks kind of like Lego countries in a way, but um, I actually got pretty lucky. Chances are you won't be as lucky in that um, all of my normals seem to be facing pretty much the right way. I forgot to go over this, but say you don't have them. Say here, I will show you what I mean. 
let's say Madagascar here has the wrong direction. So you have something that is facing down when you're done. What you do to fix that, you just come over here to normals. Sometimes you can just hit recalculate if there are a bunch of islands, but as you can see, that really didn't work here. So what we're going to have to do is select the island and hit flip direction, and that will just bring it up to the top. I think here Australia actually has something wrong. So let's just hit control L on that little island there and flip the direction. Okay, so that should have fixed it. Um, yeah, let's just try unticking. Mm, try unticking no caustics. That might speed it up a little bit. Yeah, that sped it up a bit. Not much though. Let's try limited global. I don't know. That's faster. Since we aren't doing an indoor scene or even a re very realistic scene at all, uh, it doesn't need all of the power of cycles. And so we can just turn it to limited and that should speed it up a bit. And it will still give us a good looking result. If you're doing an outdoor scene or an indoor scene or photorealistic anything, or even not really photorealistic, you want to have full global illumination, because that will make it look a lot better. Anyway, um, yeah, this is looking pretty good right now. I think we can call it quits. Uh, when you're done, you should have something that looks kind of like this when it finishes rendering. Um, you can actually, you could technically animate it so long as they're not bending. Um, just using the uh, the thickness mount, you could maybe over time you have the metric change. So these will slowly increase or quickly. Um, and I don't know. But yeah, you can do pretty much whatever you want with this. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have an idea for a tutorial, please leave a post below and I will try to get back to you on that. Uh, yeah.